Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Cold Waters, where we're going to be starting out with a new submarine. This is the Upholder class from the 1990s era. It's a British boat, and it's going to be a diesel electric sub, as opposed to what I've been sailing lately. Now, this one comes equipped with a couple of weapons that we have not seen before. It comes equipped with the Sparefish torpedoes. Now, the Sparefish are incredibly fast. They have the capability of going up to a speed of 80 knots. And they can make a range about 54,000 yards, so they can go about 50 kilometers. That's a long range for a torpedo. Then we have the Tigerfish. It's a smaller torpedo, 35 knots, 30,000 yards range. And we have the UGM-84, uh, also known as the Harpoon. And of course we have advanced decoys. Now, this replay I think is going to be, or rather this campaign, is going to be interesting for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it's a diesel electric boat, which is different. As you can see, it is far slower. It has very, very good range on the weapons, but escaping from a weapon myself at 20 knots is going to be tricky. So I'm going to have to using that low speed and that high stealth rating of 118 decibels uh, of my own noise, combined with longer range torpedoes to engage threats at range. Those small or short range knife fights that you guys have been seeing recently, I don't think that I'll be doing anything like that anytime soon. Anyway, this was all made possible thanks to a new the Extra Submarines mod, and I'll link to that in the description down below in case you want to play for yourself. It also adds a couple of new campaigns. We have North Atlantic 84, of course the 68 campaign. We have Red Dawn Rising, 1984. The Wrath of Brezhnev, 1968. Operation Polar Glory, 1984. And we have a Red Storm Rising 1987 campaign. I've been experimenting with this a little bit, but it seems like um, every now and then the campaign just seems to reset for no reason at all. So I'm not going to touch this one just yet. But I think Red Dawn Rising is interesting. Now you could argue that uh, the boat that I'm picking is from 1990, which means it is six years too new for the campaign. But I'm going to pick it regardless, and we'll see if it gets too easy. And if it does, well, we'll just start over and pick a different boat. So, Red Dawn Rising. Let's see what the story is here. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be clicking this right button a lot, because we have a ton of different boats. These are only US boats. Then we have Italian boats. We have British boats. We have German boats. French. Sweden. Australia. Uh, the Dutch, this is the Dolphin class, we have the Walrus class, Russian ships, lots and lots and lots of Russian ships. And they keep on coming and they keep on coming. Japanese, Chinese, uh, DPRK, I'm, if I'm not mistaken that's North Korea, Vietnam, and we're back to USA. Okay. So, onwards to the British boats. Where are we going to be picking? Where are you? The Vanguard class. No, sorry, not the SSBN. Uh, the Upholder class, 1990s. Let's go. Now, the interesting thing is, this one cannot launch anti-land missiles. I cannot launch Tomahawk land attack missiles. So, if we get a quest like that, then the campaign is just uh, bound to be doomed, I think. We'll just have to see how we handle that. All right, uh, what will Reaganism mean for U.S. foreign relations? Good question. What will it mean for the war? Brezhnev legacy, stagnation and paranoia. There must be elements in the Soviet party who do not like that. Provoking the bear, is Reagan pushing too hard? With strategic defense initiative. Now the SDI, if I'm not mistaken, was known as the Star Wars project, which meant shooting down uh, ICBMs using satellites, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm not too uh, too well informed on that. Soviets down a civilian airliner. That seems to spark a lot of wars lately. Pershing missiles deployed in West Germany. Nuclear ballistic missiles. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong if tensions are high already? 
Soviets thought nuclear drill Abel Archer was real. If I'm not mistaken, this is in fact what happened in history. Where the exercise got so damn real to the Soviets that they were actually thinking of responding to it in force and starting World War III. Reds attack. War declared. I'm not sure if this is in a direct response to that exercise, but I'm sure it has been uh, one of the elements that sparked this war. Okay, intelligence data indicates enemy plans at Amphibious Landing Leningrad. What? Oh. Okay. Um, this is going to be a uh, mirror universe. We are docked at Murmansk. This is not a NATO campaign, this is a Russian campaign. And we are <laughs> sailing a British boat. Yeah, that's going to make things interesting. Intelligence data indicates that enemy plans an amphibious landing at Leningrad. That's what caught me by surprise. A task force with landing ships is leaving Holy Loch now. You must intercept and destroy this force before the landing occurs. I am not sure how many weapons I have available. So let's check. Uh, 28. That's a bunch of these tiger fishes and a whole bunch of spare fish. I'm going to offload the tiger fish. And I want the spare fish on board. As well as a couple more of those uh, enter ship missiles. There. We have four advanced decoys. Okay, so that took me 14 hours. I'm not sure exactly how the Russians procured tiger fish, spare fish, and harpoon weapons, but sure, we'll just go with that. Let's get underway. Sailing from Murmansk and preparing to counter them as they move to Leningrad, which means I have a long way to travel because Leningrad is on the other side. Denmark lost. So now the red forces... Hang on. Denmark lost. Wow, there's a surface group moving there already. If that's the one that I'm supposed to capture or sink before they make it towards Leningrad, then I'm going to need a much, much faster boat. And I'm already pushing my speed. I have to sail past Denmark in order to get there in time. West Germany under siege. Russian troops cross the border into West Germany. Now, normally I'd say this is bad news, but this is good news. Because now we are the Russians. Look at that surface group right over there in the Baltic. How am I supposed to catch that? I don't think a Russian Alpha could have been able to catch that. Boom, they're there. What the hell? Don't we have any naval units in the Baltic which could have been sent to deal with these guys before me? I mean, it took me forever to get around here. Why would you task... Oh, new sonar contact. I was going to say, why would you task a Russian boat sailing from Murmansk with sailing or sinking an invasion group heading to Leningrad? Now, apparently we have a subsurface contact. Con sonar. Whoops! That was the wrong one. I hit Shift A instead of Shift S. So now I send out an active sonar ping. We know that they are burying 071, so they're slightly to the northeast. I have a total ray. I have six torpedoes. And all I need is a target. Make turns for zero knot. Ultra quiet. I had three Make knots. For three knots. Maneuvering we have Sierras 1 and 2. What's Con the condition over here? Seabed is nowhere to be found. We have a test depth of 900, so I can take my boat a bit deeper should I need to. Don't think that I really will. This guy is already very, very clear. Let's see what we can find out about him. It's definitely not a LA class. Now, of course, this is going to be an unusual campaign in the sense that I'm sinking NATO boats using a NATO boat. Hang on. Are we in fact dealing with a subsurface contact? 
It could be a Nox. Make depth four, five, eight, die, five. It could very well be a Nox. We have no layers, no nothing. What about Sierra 1? Okay, so Sierra 1 is more likely to be the Nox class. What about Sierra 2? Yep, active ping coming in. What about Sierra 2? Let's temporarily mark Sierra 1 as a Nox class. Sierra 1 is classified as escort. What can we make of Sierra 2? Definitely a surface contact. What? Are we going to start out this campaign by sinking an aircraft carrier? That would be quite a feat. I think that's the first time that I've ever encountered an aircraft carrier in the first place. So that ping was loud. I don't believe that this is going to be the surface group that we're looking for. This is a surface group. Now I'm getting to 45 feet periscope depth. So I can get a quick bearing on these guys using ESM. Provided they're not too close. Let's speed up a little. Hang on, do they have helos? I'm seeing one. Two. Potentially three helos in the air. Three helos in the air. Oh, this is going to be good. Uh, cancel periscope depth. We are not heading to periscope depth at all. Not in a situation like that. Let's see if we can get these solutions a bit more clear, but they're already pretty decent at 14,000 yards. Uh, I want to know if this is in fact an aircraft carrier. I don't find the Nox to be particularly interesting at this range. The carrier much, much more so. I'm going to turn right, or starboard as we call that. Hang on, is that a helicopter? I think I saw something for an instant there. Something on the horizon. Is that a helo? It's hard to make... Yep, that's definitely a helo. Right there. Okay, if that's a helo, then we're going deep. Alright, let's give time acceleration some... Or actually, let's give the TMA team some time to get a good motion analysis. Here we go, that's a NOx. Sierra 2 is firming up, 80%. 85. Yep. Would you look at that? Now this is in fact not what you would call an Essex class. If I'm not mistaken, this is the uh, Kuznetsov Kiev class carrier. Because Essex do not carry large anti-ship missile torpedoes, or anti-ship missiles, on the bow. You don't do that on a carrier, generally. Now, uh, let's send out one weapon towards the Nox, and two towards the Essex. Shoot two one, aye sir. Shoot two three, aye sir. I'm not sure if they're close enough to have detected those weapon launches. They might have. Now, it shouldn't take these weapons too long to reach their destination, if they're doing their standard speed of 60 knots, and then 80 knots at the moment that they go active. So they're just in transit mode now, but the moment that they actually start hunting down targets, that's when you're going to see these things speed up a lot. And the question is, what will the targets do? And moreover, is one torpedo for the Nox enough, or will it need more? I'm not sure how much explosive power these torpedoes carry. Now, I am just pointing with three, uh, basically, fingers at my position. <coughs> Hang on, did the Essex hear it? Don't mind the ship model. 
put it. Yeah, I think he's aware. He's suddenly doing 26 knots, 27 out of his maximum speed of 32. Yeah, he probably knows what's up. Let's adjust the location or the enable point for tubes or weapons 2 and 3. I find it unusual that the Nox is slowing down. This guy does not really seem to be too concerned about the torpedo coming his way. All the while, a spearfish is no joke. That's the carrier. Yeah. Weapon 1 just went active. Let's move into acquire. Let's make sure it links up exactly with the Nox. Nox is doing 18 knots. 20. It can reach 27. Hang on, the carrier? Yeah, the carrier is faster than its escort. Interesting. Okay, so this guy is pretty much screwed. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. He has him. There's a helicopter awfully close. Okay, I'm gonna cut web or cut connection to tube one. Uh, load spare fish, tube one. Now the problem is, if that helo gets close, I won't have too many options for bugging out. Because I'm, while I am pretty quiet, I am also not very good at getting the hell out of here. Oh, there's another one. Longer range. Let's see how our initial torpedo is doing. I can no longer control the thing, just keep an eye on it. Are you going to drop a noisemaker? If you are, I suggest you do so now. He's not. Alright, so that's one escort down. I wonder what the other torpedoes are going to be doing. If they're going to be successful. There's one, there's the other one. Look at the displacement of that Essex. Trying to rush away from the torpedoes. Good luck with that. Now I wonder when I can expect company from the helicopter. Or rather helicopters. There's likely to be more than one coming towards my position. I'm not seeing any dipping sonar. That's good. Hope that stays the same. Con, Let's see if we can control, firm up Sierra fire. 3. Con, fire control, Could be a Spruance. Sierra 3 is classified as escort. I'm not sure how far away it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's coming my way at best speed. Trying to intercept me ASAP. Now it seems like at least one of my weapons has acquired. That's the target. The only torpedoes that I can track are my own spearfish, so that means that the helicopters have not dropped any weapons. Then again, if they would have, I would probably be noticing at this point. Make a small turn starboard get my sonar team a little bit more time to work on that spruance before I start sending weapons in. Now his propulsion is going to take a massive hit. Is that enough? Hit. Console Kill. Contact. Sierra two. Last bearing zero, seven, six. Actually do me a favor, reload two mosses. I might need the decoys later. So, how was that for a start of the campaign? Instantly sinking an aircraft carrier. That is not at all what I was expecting. But sure, I'll take what I can get. 
Now I still have no indication that those helicopters know exactly where I am. There's one hovering, there's two hovering, and number three is coming down now. Three helos. I don't like that at all. They are said to be nearby. Con, torpedo room, two, two, ready. That spruance is Con, torpedo room, a bit two, slippery. 37%, 38, 40-ish. 42, 43. It seems like he's coming my way at best speed. 50. 55. Holy crap, dude. You're cutting it close. 80. You know what? I'll take an 80. Uh, active torpedo. Surface contact. Good luck. If that Spruance is racing towards me at 24 knots, then I wonder how much his sonar is going to be giving him warning of an incoming torpedo. Yep, well, he was aware of that. Alright, so the weapon is acquired, that means we can cut the wire. And now the question is, is one of those helicopters going to take offense? Because once again, I gave good indication of my position. Looks like the weapon sailing around the noisemaker. Coming left. Attempting to reacquire. Has reacquired. Hard turn to port. I don't think it's going to work out too well for you, Sunshine. Boom. Alright, so that's your escorts. Now your helicopters. I can't quite hear them, but I know that they must be near. So we're going to make for 10 knots. Slowly getting out of the area. There's really not too much that I can actively do against the torpedoes or the... Sorry, against the helicopters. Torpedoes come later. I can just try to slip away. There's still aircraft nearby. Just try to get out of here. Now I'm checking constantly to see if there's a dipping sonar in the water. If there is, that's going to give me an indication that there's a helicopter nearby. And if that's the case, well, then torpedoes are soon to follow. I know that I can go faster, I can go over 20 knots if I want to. I'm not sure at what depth I'm going to start cavitating and I'm not really willing to find out. Not in a situation where there's three helicopters on top of me. But slipping out of the area at 10 knots should not make too much noise. So I should be able to stay stealthy and still get out. Still aircraft nearby. And the game might be able to help me a little bit by showing me where the helicopters are. Call it cheating, but if they didn't want us to know where the helicopters were, and they wouldn't be showing them. And of course, the nighttime operations or semi nighttime are making it more difficult for me to detect the helicopters. Or at least visually. Are we clear? No, we're still not clear. Damn it. Uh, I'm going to run into the shoreline if I'm not careful. Looks like I might not need those decoys after all. Anyway, if I'm not mistaken, then we are getting closer to where I was to be supposed to uh, engage that surface group, that invasion group. That seems to be somewhere, well, at least off to that side of the map. 
So I have to transit this straight and then south and then east. I think that by the time I get there, the invasion will have already been completed. So there's really not a lot that I can do about it. They're just going to have to fend for themselves. And again, if they really wanted to tackle that invasion fleet, don't send a diesel electric sub. It just does not work. The thing's not fast enough. Oh, hang on. I'm lucky to be alive. That's two torpedoes. For some reason... Yeah, there we go. Now we have it required. Noisemaker. Where are we and where are we going? And that's number three. Moss fired. It seems like the torpedo is way more interested in the moss than in me, so in that sense it seems to be working. They decoyed one, two, potentially three. Oh, we can control the moss as well. Well, not now anyway. The only thing I'm worried about is that these torpedoes are going to attack the moss potentially circle around it and then find that it is not actually a weapon. So they're gonna punch through it, come around, and they might detect me if I get unlucky. And of course this was to be expected. Decoy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez, stop cutting it so close. That right there is what I was concerned about. That torpedo's coming back. I still have 18 decoys. I wonder if that's going to be enough. This boat apparently is not fast enough to be able to create uh, the, uh, what are they called? The knuckles. At 20 knots, apparently you cannot create a knuckle. Oh! Okay, never mind, we're safe. That was close. Torpedo on me. That's that one. And we're going to be seeing a couple of them coming in from port. Right about now. Noisemaker dropped. I really don't like this. Three torpedoes on me. With very little chance of actually getting away from this alive. Alright, let's see if I can keep him busy. By sending out another one of those decoys. Not really an issue. One torpedo on him, two on him, three on him potentially. Give me another one of those decoys. Tubes two and three. Oh shit, we have one of them on us. Where is it? Yeah, I think it is. Noisemaker. Torpedo decided to go for the noisemaker. And now has decided to go for the moss. Or at least. It seems so. Come on. The amount of trails on the nav map is getting a bit absurd. What's that torpedo doing? That one right there. Boom. That's one torpedo that self-destructed. I think that that one we don't have to worry about, but this one we do. And I am starting to churn through my decoys quite quick. I've already deployed, there we go, six of them. Four left, sorry, fourteen left. Alright, that explosion did not impact me at all. But there is not a lot that stops these helos from doing this again. This is the moss, yes? Yeah, this is both of the mosses. There's still aircraft nearby. <coughs> okay. Let's see if we can get out of here.
because I stopped loading tube 3 when I, because I went to ultra quiet. Where are the damn helicopters? This one is potentially the closest one. This one... I can't find myself underwater, so I should be fine. And that one... Same. So it was this first helicopter that's the... There we go, that's the problem. We'll stop. Now I know that, once again, this is a Russian helo. Of course it's supposed to be a NATO one. But... We simply cannot have those rendered in the game. At least not in its current state. Maybe by the time that you're watching this video, that'll have changed. But at the current moment, they're using Russian models for uh, Western ships. I wonder what this guy is going to be doing. Are you just listening? Or are you working towards dropping another torpedo? What is your intention? Dipping sonar. There's me. Now we wait. But we're going to wait a little faster. Make turns for three knots. Keeps dipping, but does he know what to do next, or has he expended all of its weapons already? That could be a possibility here. Let's keep sneaking out of the area. I already consider this operation a success, although it's not the mission that I was tasked with going for. I was tasked with sinking an invasion group, and instead I ended up sinking an aircraft carrier. An old one, that is, but an aircraft carrier nonetheless. Will that make the Admiral happy? Or am I going to be relieved of command for just ignoring orders and not going after the right group? We'll have to see. Now, at this point, I think I'm far enough away be able to afford a little bit more speed. Alright, tube 3 is ready. We're secured from ultra quiet. There's the helo. That little bright spot in the water. That's his rotor wash impacting the water and forming a little bit of a disturbance. Still aircraft nearby. I wonder how far away I need to be for an aircraft to not show up on the aircraft nearby indicator. He just seems to be hovering there. Make turns Increase to 10. Zero knot maneuvering eye. So we can keep this boat quiet and escape with our lives. Now we have plenty of weapons left. 22 weapons, among which 2 decoys, so 26 weapons actual. That should be enough. There are actually 20 weapons actual, my bad. Yes, we're home free. No aircraft nearby. Leave the combat. Alright, that's where I'm going to end the episode. Let's see if we can catch the other surface group that we're tossed with going for in the next one. Because this one, 35 minutes, I think that's a nice length. Let me know what you think of the campaign so far. I know it's a bit unusual going in with a British boat and a Russian campaign. But then again, I really was not expecting a Russian campaign. I thought that this would be uh, a title for some NATO campaign. Anyway, shows you how much I know. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments, and I'll see you soon for more videos of this Cold Waters campaign.